Hello world, my name is Ihor, and this is Beats from Scratch. The idea is to take a little groove box or a drum machine or sampler with preloaded bunch of samples and try to make music just with this. I took this idea from Jeremy Blake from Redmin's recording. He does this amazing Beats from Scratch episodes. Check one of them over here. And I got quite inspired by his videos and his thought processes and I decided to make my own. So I already made one episode, so you can go and check it out here. It came pretty cool, I think. And yeah, today I have, as a machine, I have a Digitact again. And uh, the sample pack is Worm... How, how was it called? Worm Deep House, I think, from Loop Masters. So basically, it's a little tiny sample pack with 50 samples. And I think basically what it is, is kind of a kit for... Loop Cloud Drum, but I've never used Loop Cloud, Loop Cloud Drums, but yeah, whatever. So I loaded these samples on the Digitag, and that's pretty much it. And uh, another feature which I wanted to uh, try today or explore today is the MIDI Loopback. So there is this guy, Matthias, who made a tutorial about the MIDI Loopback. I'm going to link this video over here. He is an amazing music producer, so check his channel as well. And uh, I've never actually tried this MIDI loopback because I thought it's kind of complicated and I'm lazy, you know. So, but today I've tried and yeah, it kind of works. It kind of works really straightforward and doesn't require too many um, preparation for that. And uh, I'm gonna, so basically the idea of MIDI loopback is that you can utilize additional eight tracks and that means that you can utilize additional eight LFOs and route them into different parameters, whether it's track parameters or like any single track parameters or even effects parameters. So you can basically modify with LFO delay time, for example, or delay uh, the filter on the delay, which I'm going to use right now. So let me show it real quick. Basically, what I need to do is to go to any MIDI channel uh, let's say it's going to be channel 16 or MIDI H. I'm going to enable channel 9. So by default, channel 9 is... Uh, so by default, uh, these eight channels of the DigiTag, they can be controlled by MIDI channels. One till eight accordingly, right? And the ninth channel you can utilize if you would like to um, only change the effects, but not uh, changing any of the tracks. That's exactly what... I would like to do now. So I'm gonna go into AMP page and also select message 89 here. And this message, what it does, it controls the high pass filter frequency in the delay um, uh, settings page, basically. And all these numbers like 89, you can just go into the Digitact um, to, uh, manual and find them over there in the kind of appendix about MIDI implementation. So what I would like to do is to um, utilize it uh, and like the LFO and slowly modify the filter so that delay um, feedback is going to be like a little bit higher frequencies and then goes into lower frequencies. That's that's the main idea basically. So where we were, I enabled um, CC message number 89, which is I got from the manual. Then I'm going to go into filter page or CC value page and enable this knob basically and right now if i'm gonna control this like if i'm gonna set it somewhere going into delay page we already see that this thing moved into the middle and now if i go back into the in into the cc value page increase this one it goes there what we need to do right now is to go to lfo destination will be cc1 value I'd like it to be small, uh, slow, and a little bit of depth. And basically maybe set default position in the middle. And let's go and check this. You see? It's moving. Magic. <laughs> also, I'm going to go and utilize sort of like a band pass filter for that. And then maybe move it a little bit towards the high kind of frequencies. Yeah, and delay, of course, going to go into reverb a little bit. Yeah, but that's already kind of uh, musical stuff. So that's the main idea, basically. 
of the media loopback function to me to modify the parameters of the effects with an LFO. So yeah, um, enough boring stuff. Let's get into the jamming. And first I'd like to start with, of course, the chords uh, sample. Let's try to find something. So this sample pack has many different chords and stuff like that. So bass, uh, samples and chords. Maybe, maybe I can select this one. Um, let's do 120, 125 today. It's gonna be half kind of house, half techno. So let's go and do, of course, the long reverb decay and send this guy fully into reverb. Maybe not fully, maybe like that, like that. Nice. So, and let's start the metronome, maybe. I think that's going to be enough. But I need two bars actually here, I think. Or maybe let's do four. Nice. And maybe let's go and... What if I go and do this? filter and now if I send this into delay a little bit okay let's remove the metronome Cool, and let's find the kick drum just to have sort of a reference for any other sound. So let's go here and try to, try to find one of the three kick drums. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to, this, to have this one. But what I usually do with kick drums, I'm gonna make them small, reduce the volume and increase a little bit of distortion. Nice. Um, yeah, let's put four on the floor. Maybe something like this. And let's also quantize the fifth track. Track five fully. Nice. Okay, that will do. And now I'd like to have the bass line. And I think in this sample pack, what they have is that if I have chord port or portal, um, the bass from that same kind of name also works for that. Let's figure it out. So if I go into track eight, where I usually have my bass line and try to find something. So this bass. just gonna put one somewhere here yeah two maybe let's you 
utilize also the high bass filter on the kick drum just to emphasize the low end frequency yeah something like that just a, a tiny touch and if you listen carefully um, the chord sound delay especially it changes no it doesn't because it doesn't because I forgot to enable the LFO and how you enable the LFO you need at least one trick to enable it and since our track 16 is on the on the uh, MIDI channel 9 it's gonna it's not gonna trigger any of the tracks on the Digitag so it's easy to place one trick here so that it just triggers the track itself and then the LFO uh, will gonna go around so let's listen what's that no it actually does trigger something and I have no idea why but Anyways, let's uh, go into track 16 and do it differently. So I'm going to remove this trick. I'm going to put the trigless one and then uh, holding it, I'm going to enable so that it triggers the LFO and let's have a listen. And this is how I produce music. I think that's going to work like that. It doesn't work like this, but then I found something different and then I proceed. Anyways. I'm gonna go into track 7 and try to find the open hat for it. This is a pretty cool one. Of course, as usually, let's do it short. Also, the LFO. I like sending the LFO on hi-hats into tune. And also it's gonna be like um, sample and hold doesn't matter the speed and then just a little bit of depth just a little bit maybe random and just even less than that should be just tiny tiny touch amp envelope Okay, let's do this a little longer and the last one and send them into reverb just a little bit on a little bit to the right so we can have space on the left for another hi-hat and let's find another hi-hat that's gonna be closed one I think this one will do. Level goes all the way down. And then we have a swing a little bit, uh, just maybe 54 amp envelope like this. And then introduce it back. Let's utilize also high pass filter just to remove all the low end from it. And maybe LFO just to open up the, the amp decay time a little bit. And again, sample and hold. Put one here and make it um, 
yeah, like once per two bars on the second bar, on the second run, actually. Maybe some more. This one, let's do like one per on third iteration. Nice. And let's add some weird percussion over here. What do we have? Bell? Whoa, that's too weird. This one I like for performing, like you don't need the close head anymore, you can fade it out instead of muting. And then, for example, the chord can go away. That wasn't the chord, that was bass sound. And that's chord. Like that. Then, for example, we can mute those again. Gain all the volume back. And then. And then we can fade back the open hat. This mixer is truly amazing. I like, I love it. What else? We have snare. And with snare, I like usually lately, I was doing this simple trick. Let's use this one. Nice. So uh, the idea is to put one trick like, like this one, right? And then make it only playing when the feel knob is pressed. And then I'm going to copy this one, paste it into this four, then copy four and paste them all over the, the page. So if I right now going to play, nothing is going to be heard. But the moment So basically you can kind of perform the snare drum. as you wish. Let's maybe do the tune a little bit again. And send it into the reverb. Quite some. watching this video. If so, put a like on this video. If you did not, put a dislike and let me know why didn't you like it in the comment section down below. 
follow me on Instagram where I post some other videos and, and pictures of my studio and whatnot. And have fun. technique 